Back in the 80s, arcades were the shit. Nowadays, you'll only see people at the arcade lumbering around playing a few games because they're bored. They're never anywhere near as lively or crowded as they used to be. In the middle of the heyday of this phenomenon, 1986 in particular, Midway released an arcade game called Rampage. It would turn out to be a monster success, no pun intended. Up to three players could control ginormous monsters, formerly human but mutated, whose only object of desire is to destroy everything tear down every building in every city in America. How could that not be fun? It was so much fun, and it ate up so many quarters that Midway released a ton of ports to home consoles. In this case, the Nintendo Entertainment System. They narrowed the playability down to two players from three. You can play as either George, a giant gorilla who's obviously modeled after King Kong, and Lizzie, who's replicated after Godzilla. The giant werewolf Ralph never made the cut. Now I haven't played the original arcade game in forever, so I won't be able to accurately compare all the differences, so I'll just focus on this version for the most part. As mentioned before, the object is to tear shit down. You climb up buildings, punch holes in them until they fall to the ground, and keep repeating the process until all the buildings on the screen are gone. And then you move on to the next city. In the process, you'll contend with helicopters, soldiers, and sometimes tanks and police cruisers that fire an ass load of firepower at you. One of the biggest pains in the ass in this game are the photographers who blind you with a flash of their camera and cause you to lose your grip and fall to the pavement below. You get a life meter, which can be refilled by eating food and people you might find in the holes of the buildings you punch in. But if you eat a toilet, a cigarette, or other numerous hazards, you'll lose health, and it'll cause your monster to cough up a lung. When your health meter is empty, you'll shrink back into human form and walk off the screen completely in the nude and clutching your junk in utter humiliation. In two-player mode, if you shrink into a human, the other player can actually eat you, which replenishes their health and is a pretty comical scene. To turn back into a monster, simply press the B button. In two player mode, if one of you walks off screen or is eaten while the other is still rampaging, press B to come back clinging to a zeppelin. You can respawn like this an infinite number of times throughout the game, so it's real easy to beat. Or is it? Well, the game itself is pretty easy. The enemies don't really slow you down too much, except the asshole photographers and the tanks and cops that'll send you flying across the screen. And the infinite lives part doesn't exactly provide much of a challenge, but the length of the game certainly does. Every five or six levels you get a map screen which shows how much of the country you've conquered so far. You start in California and finish back in California, I guess to cover whatever ground you missed. A weird part about this is how you'll skip right over Canada to get to Alaska and swim across the ocean to take out Hawaii. I guess these guys have a major issue with the United States. Not just the continental states either, they don't fuck around. There are 128 cities altogether, and it takes roughly 2 minutes or so to beat each level. So you're looking at over 4 straight hours of gameplay without a save or password feature. It takes fucking forever. So the real challenge of this game is the test of patience. The game is pretty fun to play, especially with 2 players, but it gets old after a while. So playing through for 4 hours isn't worth it at all. You're not missing anything by playing it through anyway. Every single level is really just the same as the last, just with a slightly different arrangement of buildings. The graphics aren't bad, but every level looks so damn redundant. The gameplay is repetitive too. All you're doing is climbing and punching continuously. Dodging the military's attack is kinda pointless, cause you know that you can just get right back up if your health runs out. Each level is based on days, and every week you'll end up getting a bonus stage to freshen up things a bit. All it really is is one building with a goodie inside somewhere, and the first person to find it gets the health meter filled up completely and some bonus points. It's really fucking pointless in one player mode, because there's no time limit, so you know you're gonna find it. But it's still nice for a change of pace in the music, since all you hear is the same monotonous generic loop throughout the whole game. If you do manage to gut it out and make your way through all 128 levels without falling asleep, you'll get this ending. The same map screen you've seen 30 freaking times already with the word congratulations smacked in the middle. Holy shit, that makes it all worthwhile. Overall, Rampage isn't a bad game. It won't keep you occupied for hours on end, but it is a fun time killer, and the two-player mode at least gives you an objective if you use the point system to make it competitive. Plus, you can punch the shit out of each other. 
Well, that pretty much wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.